Hey there, lovely soul, and welcome to this video for the full moon. Here today, as I'm recording this, it is the 28th. It is, oh wow, look at that. It's 221, almost 222 here on the 28th. This has been kind of a long time coming with this video. I've been working on setting up my my videos i have two cameras here so i have my card camera so we can really get a good look at my cards and me shuffling and the setup here and also my main camera here um so this has like i said this has been um something i've been working on for the last day trying to set up video and audio and i'm having sinking um sinking issues with the audio and the video so i've had to change my preferred idea which was having a a picture in picture kind of thing so the main the main camera here being the main the main uh, video with the the camera or the the card camera being in the corner however the program that i use for that is i guess just having a hard time keeping everything situated i'm sure it's because of my relic dinosaur of a mac uh macbook that i have so what we're doing now is i've shifted so i can move on with my life <laughs> and i've shifted this so we have it um we have a side by side view here so i'm actually going to be uploading a separate video with just the main camera and also a separate video with just this uh camera video as well so anyway without further ado let's get into this i hope you like the new setup i hope that this sound works for you i'm going to try to keep my my face not too close and not too far away from the the microphone um and we are going to be getting into our full moon readings now this is very different than what i've done before and something that has that came to me kind of a little fluttering butterfly about do, working with birth days or or numbers and dates and stuff and it just didn't quite hit until um these last couple days and so what we're going to be doing is going by your birthday so if your birthday is between the first and the fifth that first reading is for you the sixth through the uh, 11th then the 12th through the 16th the 17th through the 21st the 22nd through the 26th and then the 27th through the 31st so we have six reads i will be doing um a couple of other ones but we are going to be doing this one first and each of these six readings will incorporate some different cards um i have dragon fey uh sacred geometry archangel oracle i have archetypes hidden worlds um and then we are going to get into um for sure what we're going to be using is the moonology uh and light seers tarot and the dreams of gaia tarot so um Next, I want to get into what this full moon is all about. And right off the top, I want to send you over to Tanya Gabrielle. She is a astro numerologist. So she combines astrology with numerology, which is super awesome. And I highly recommend subscribing to her and watching all of her videos. But um, definitely go and watch the video about the full moon if you haven't already. There's a lot of really cool stuff going on with this full moon in um in libra where when where their sun is in aries both are at eight at eight degrees and um so of course they need to be at the same the same degree to 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 have the sun directly behind the moon to illuminate the moon perfectly for the full moon but then there's also a lot of other things going on um with our planets with the in in eight degrees so we have a stellium happening but again i don't want to take up time in this video um 
uh, trying to describe or or get into that because it's really her Tanya's thing and again I just really really encourage you to watch her video on the full moon for um for all of that information but the eights the infinity um symbol takes a a front and center uh um center stage there because everything is with the eights with the infinity symbol with um getting into the energy of our infinite nature connecting with our souls being strong in that energy being in that that zero point of the infinity symbol and having that balance and so really the beginning of this year has been about stabilizing and getting a nice solid firm smooth foundation for ourselves and sifting out anything that doesn't belong and getting things in a in a way that keeps us and gets us stable gets us into a place where we can receive we can connect we can heal we can make connections in our lives so we can put things together for myself this month it's been a lot of clearing out space and energies that pull from me and then also connecting deeply with the Akashic records with my past lives and and going into very deep healing for myself so I can um, really kind of solidify things moving forward and I know that that's been um, maybe not the exact theme for theme for everybody but it's been about let's get things more stable let's find a peace let's let's really bring in our authenticity and tap into what makes us tick what fuels our fire what are our passions who are we what needs to be healed what are we in fear of what holds us back like all of these things all of these components that that make for a bumpy road and then what do we need to smooth that this um full moon I started feeling with the past full, with our last full moon, um, honestly, literally. And I talked about this full moon and this chunk of time between the last full moon and this full moon being really, really intense, very pivotal, a lot of big changes and revelations and, and stuff coming up in this time period. And boy, Yes, it's definitely been that for us. So, um, so anyway, without further ado, I want to get into the readings. Um, hey there, and welcome to your reading for birthdays, the 22nd through the 26th. I want to welcome you to this reading for the full moon and for the rest of March and the very beginning of April. So welcome to your reading. We're starting off with moonology and as we have been throughout these readings and um, there's been some variation with the Oracle cards depending on where we go in the reading. Oh, there's our card. Believe in the impossible. Oh, I love this card so much. Believe in the impossible. What a great card to start off our reading. Um, really interested to see what our what our tarot brings us with this card coming out first. Um, I'm feeling a lot of. synchronicities, magic, um, dreams, lucid dreaming, experiencing things like never before, third eye opening type stuff. What do we have here? This is the eight of air coming in as our first card. Let me move this because this card, these cards get a lot of glare. They're very shiny. So we have the Eight of Air coming in first here. Whoo, okay, Eight of Air. That magical number eight here. Next card, 
uh, the knowledge um, with this is a major arcana card this is the number nine so we have eight and then nine with the knowledge Ooh. then then we have the sixth card of our major arcana no sorry this is our sixth card of this is the earth card sorry six of earth geez got confused there six of earth coming in after knowledge so um eight of air the knowledge card and then the six of earth oh that was quick and then five of water okay so we have believe in the impossible our first card out our eight of air so what i've been doing with every single one of these readings is just quickly going over each of jeez freaking cats each of our um main cards here with our eight of air okay the ego truth power responsibility consequences cause and effect lessons learned and memory ego does not always tell the truth effect will always follow cause time to change your ways admit you made a mistake memory is imperfect self-justification does not mitigate harm consequences are inescapable and we all make mistakes and we are creatures driven by our egos our egos is in part our identity the center of our consciousness it is driven by our instincts and base desires and constrained by culture and society okay i don't need to read more <laughs> this ego this is like the an ego the ego card coming in after this believe in the impossible is like saying you're in your you're in your own way about what you think you know uh, about what you know to be true like these are the things that i know and outside of those parameters is not real quote unquote not real um so that's where we're starting off here with this um and the need to balance what is coming through as as real as guidance as outside of yourself and what is your experience your identity let's get into this knowledge card um because that definitely has some information for us man this book is odd oh what i'm so confused here oh here we are one more down here we are holy moly sorry about that i was re i don't know what it is these roman numerals lately but i'm it is messing with my dyslexia <laughs> okay knowledge skills understanding training education and practical experience we exist to learn and we learn to exist knowledge is power has your past education served you do not limit your potential for learning a time for new study and learning an opportunity to learn about people in the world surround yourself with books and information does bias and unfounded prejudice close you from new knowledge yeah so the knowledge card represents the first of eight primary lessons for being the acquisition of knowledge we in our physical forms exist to learn as we learn to exist knowledge is power and without it we are powerless it is knowledge that enables you to learn earn a living it is knowledge that enables you to cook your meals it is knowledge that enables you to treat a wound so that you can prevent infection it is knowledge that enables you to move through your day to live your life without knowledge and the ability to acquire it humanity would not be the evolved species that it is so that also means change so we have this thing here coming and going 
we have a certain set of ideas, parameters, experiences, or history that make us who we are, to think how we think, to act how we act, to be who we are, and um, and that really being uh, kind of our, our base. And then for some of us, as we awaken, we need to leave this this person behind and open up to what we don't know and to understand that we don't know so much more than we know and that what we know is for a lot of it is what's been told to us and we didn't learn it firsthand um and there's like it says here um does bias and unfounded prejudice close you to new knowledge do, has your education is your education still serving you right now or are you just seeing life and creation and the universe um as or from one perspective a very logical kind of cold non-magical uh thing and it's extraordinary i mean we started off here with believe in the impossible and these cards coming in afterwards is saying you know believing in the impossible means to set aside and to be open to changing the framework to changing deleting the programs to installing new programs to maybe even deconstructing the motherboard and all the innards and starting off with something new let's see what our six of earth has to say family community um providence protection dependability responsibility duty service self-sacrifice martyrdom responsibility and duty to family give love care and support lead by example a time of sharing learn about nature important matters need attention uh, protect the animals forests and oceans help for the right reasons the six of earth reminds us that our responsibility and duty to our family especially the younger members it asks us to be selfless and in service to those who are in need and dependent on us for love care and support um so what i'm really feeling here with this card um without even having to get very deep into this is is <laughs> I'm being told, look at how different these two are. So for me, at least with the energies right now, we're seeing somebody who is um, like, they just came in from outside. They're, you know, getting into, they're in with, with Mother Gaia and Earth and, and connecting outside of themselves. Whereas this one is like, what I'm picking up at least right now, is that it's all from like within. I, I hold the balance. I am the one in power. And with this one, with that f bowl of fruit there, is really saying I'm connected to, to nature and I call upon nature to nurture me and my thoughts and my behavior and my power and, and everything else. Um, so let's continue on with go getting into the five of water because that's going to help round things out here five of water loss betrayal fear doubt hopelessness isolation self-pity and blame feeling alone and isolated without hope consumed by fears and doubts unable to see a way forward trapped in the moment feeling angry and betrayed mourn your loss playing the victim the five of water represents feelings of fear, doubt, and hopelessness and can cloud our minds and hearts and give rise to confusion, misunderstanding, and anger. 
These emotions are often born of our own pain and insecurities and can cloud our ability to see the love that surrounds us. Okay, so, and there's that card. Sorry, I wasn't sharing that. Um, so as we see, she's just like really into her own despair and she doesn't see all these beautiful little fishies around her that's trying to make her happy and trying to show her that it's not all about what's going on in here. And it really feels to me like there's this kind of push-pull situation going on. And we'll get more cards here. That there's this push-pull situation going on here that is about um, accepting what's coming through. And, and wanting to learn but being kind of of two minds almost and and being confused about the new connections coming through the new um the synchronicities the the um oh gosh how do we put this this like like wanting to be connected but then when you connect, you're like, oh my God, what is happening right now? Like that kind of thing. Um, <laughs> two of Wands, the Empress, Seven of Cups, and Ten of Pentacles. And... Okay, I'm turning these all right side up because a couple of them did come out in reverse. So we have our Two of Wands, the Empress, Seven of Cups, and Ten of Pentacles. So Ten of Pentacles under that Five of Water, Seven of Cups under that um, Sixth of Earth, the Empress under knowledge and two of wands underneath this um, uh, eight of swords. And what's interesting here, we have two wands, we have two swords, even though this is the eight of swords. It's just, I find that interesting. Um, that was pointed out to me. Um, we have knowledge with the Empress. <sighs> Oops, I just blew out my candle. <laughs> with my deep breath and um okay so yeah it feels like there's just more more of this inner kind of what's happening here what is real this like seeing through literally am i seeing things clearly or am, or am i seeing what i want to see do the do i want to see this i don't know like that sort of thing again with with um or i say again but i feel when i with this it didn't come in under the five or the six of earth but but i say again because we have the empress and the empress is always especially as you can see in this card very connected to mother gaia but in this this set she comes out or this pairing i should say comes out with that knowledge card so really deeply here i felt gaia um and we have all we have let's see we have earth we have air we have water um we have fire with this two of wands and we have the seven of cups coming in underneath our uh six so we have six of earth and seven of cups um the seven of cups I'm really feeling this is like sorry it's a what 
Wow, this Seven of Cups is loaded. I'm sorry, this is, it, it, it just is. It's more loaded than normal. Normally, this is about, what well, the way that I pick up on this is like, I, I see this as, you know, either flow is limited, need, being confused, needing to sort stuff out, that sort of thing. But here, I see this more like, trusting in what you see trusting in in your understanding and and again i'm being shown this believe in the impossible so it's so it's like looking into bowls of water like scrying with with water with fire with crystal and then seeing things and going do i really see that Am I tripping out? What is happening? Can I trust it? Like there's this back and forth thing and it keeps coming back to this here. It's like funny. It's like reminds me. This is really funny. This reminds me of a person who is very spiritual, is very empathic, is very, um, doesn't even understand how into the metaphysics that they actually are. They just haven't seen it that way. But the way that they live their life is very much like with the elements and positive energy and forgiveness and healing and letting go and just, you know, connecting to nature, but not really seeing it like in that magical way, like like I've always felt connected to nature. I've always loved trees, but going through the spiritual journey that I've gone through and then to be able to connect with nature in such a deep way to the extent that I actually channel Mother Earth Gaia for my healings, for my meditations and all that I do. It's like it was true before, but about me being connected to nature. But now it's like a completely other thing and experience for me and for those who come in contact with me because of the work that I've done and the letting go of what I think is possible because trust me if you would have come to me 15 years ago and said uh <laughs> It's funny just to think about it, but and said, look, you're going to be a healer. You're going to be working with Mother Earth Gaia. You're going to channel her. You're going to do energy healing and all this stuff. I'd be like, first off, I'm severely ill myself because I was. And uh, you can't connect to a like a person. Nature isn't a person like, you know, like. Like I, I would have just rejected a lot of that because even though I would have been like, oh, that's interesting. I would have thought you were crazy. And I would have rejected a lot of that because my ego, what I, the framework of which from which I came from, even though I've always been very spiritual, even though I've always understood things on a very deep level and oh, I was giving psychic messages when I was five and and even though I've been healing my whole life, I didn't know that I was healing my whole life. Um, so I, so even though th during my life there was certain things in place that in, in the way that I was living and breathing and being, there was enough there to cloud that for me not to be able to see it and extrapolate it. And that's kind of what I see here. It's like, this is, this is showing me somebody who desperately wants to um, cross over into a new paradigm, but at the same time, feeling like if I, like, am I still me if I do that? Have I crossed into crazy town? Have I gone into woo woo, the woo woo universe that, you know, is for people that are not like me? I feel this very kind of like, I'm this certain type of person and us, these certain type of people don't go there. <laughs> and First off, that again is a program. That's a thought form. That's a construct. That's a that's an understanding of how things are that you have put in place for yourself. Um, and maybe others too. Maybe maybe others too have put this in place for you. It's usually like that. You know, we have a certain understanding about stuff. But um, I see here through. What's interesting is with this five. Is this a five of water? Yeah, five of water. Oh. 
and then this 10 of pentacles so we're doubling up from this five to this 10 the five being about loss and sadness and confusion and the 10 being about the 10 of pentacles being about connection and abundance and community and family and and all this you know abundant energy so it's like you have this and if anything i'm also feeling like this is this is kind of more your spirit tribe this is what we have on the other side that can manifest into reality but you need to be okay with first the spirit the energy of this type these types of connections and then it, for it to manifest so it's kind of like you feel out of place and that there aren't the the people for you your tribe for you but it's also because you think you're so different and so and i don't mean it like like special like so di but you feel like i don't fit into these different categories yet i mean pulled into the metaphysical pulled into the spiritual pulled into energy and pulled into crystals and pulled into sacred geometry and pulled into creation and art and nature and all this stuff but I don't feel like I'm like these woo-woo people at the same time. And trust me, I get it. I say it on one hand, like I'm the wooiest person you'll ever meet. And on the other hand, I feel like I'm um I'm very normal, if you will. Like um that I have a very logical level head about me even though I'm a shaman and a mystic and a healer and a seer and a tarot reader and an artist that I have this very balanced energy about me that allows me to be on both sides of this and um that is that type of 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 feeling of energy is definitely there for for you too um but but it's about first we need to separate from the confusion from the loss of it's kind of like too like what happens with spiritual awakening is this like period of sadness of loss that's like what we thought was all real and and true about our world um starts to crumble and fall apart and while we want the truth we want the understanding we want the the knowing and the knowledge to to be there for us at the same time the more we know the more we're like oh my god like how kind of she is she's just like seriously like all of this stuff is just is is illusion and then what is real because what is real doesn't seem real and what seems real isn't real and that in in a, in a really short straight to the point definition is spiritual awakening is this flipped existence of an understanding um that can be really hard to reconcile especially if you've been somebody that's you know very logical and grounded and and has more of that maybe that that masculine energy that sort of thing going on because what's being asked of you here and now is the um we're going to get into some self cards with the archetype cards because what's being asked of you now is really about um letting go of what you think you are who the world it being just really um opening up to reality and and to do that um it's really gonna take letting go and breaking down some walls and i i really um would suggest that you do the meditation that i did um for body love and connecting to your guardian angel that will definitely oh we got our card the father oh interesting interesting okay um the father card let's take a look at that so there's our archetype card um interesting and get right into it 
The great father, the masculine, the protector, alongside the mother, the father resides in the central axis of the archetypal family. The father embodies both light and dark aspects of the masculine. Thus, he is infinitely dynamic and complex. His energy is strong and regal, embodying such virtues as honesty, wisdom, and loyalty. Yet, ironically and simultaneously, the father is often absent, literally and emotionally. Through absence or action the father eventually reveals that he is neither a king nor a god but a human being with many flaws and wounds he is both the guardian and and one who leaves us to the wolves here yet gone the champion and the failure the father can never resolve or escape this duality it is inherent in the archetype itself witnessing the father's limitations allows the child to grow beyond the family and into the world oh wow supportive strategic regal and kind uh, kind authority with the light and with the dark disappearing disappointing devastated by failures and read poems about the father sharon olds his stillness william blake's little boy lost and become a student of this masculine energy watch the father in movies in Sha in shakespeare plays see the father as a pattern not a per not personal okay so So it's interesting because we're talking here about this wanting to know but being afraid to know wanting to be there but not wanting to be there this kind of thing and the father you know what we just read about the father is really speaking to to that kind of thing there but not there um protective but also abandoning um available but gone um you know that sort of thing um and I guess what this is asking of you is to see where you are and where you've been that embodies this archetype. And with this, I can really see this here. And it's interesting to me that the father comes up. We have a lot of male energy here. We have with this um, eight of air with the knowledge card and with this six of earth all um all showing us male energy but then to balance this out we have the empress here um so you know we have we have both of these energies i know they're from different decks but we have them here with the father and the mother here so to speak with the empress um so what I'm seeing here, what I'm feeling here is more energy has been with the father energy and we need to move into the mother. We need to connect with nature because then we'll see how, um, how any and all elements can be nurturing and destructive air, earth, water, fire and the new according to our beautiful mother Gaia the new element that we all need to integrate with and understand deeply is the energy of tech technology which also kind of tends to be more on the masculine kind of father side I'm not saying that that feminine energy isn't into tech either trust me I'm not but I'm kind of feeling that, that there's this imbalance of energies towards the masculine, towards the logic, towards the protecting of the status quo of going, you know, I need to see, I need to just be like Papa Bear here kind of thing um, where it's it, more balance needs to happen. And remember, we started this off with, whoa, believe in the impossible so if you can believe in yourself in the impossible that you can change that you can evolve that you, that that there is so much more to see out there and take yourself from the position of being rigid um and even causing yourself pain as you can see that one that one sword is making him bleed and he's deciding that on his own he's deciding I'm that like steadfast and kind of stubborn with what I with what I'm letting come in or what I believe in that sort of thing. 
And it's kind of reminding me of that archetype type father that's like, you know, very that patriarch that's like my way or the highway. This is the way that it is kind of thing. And and this being a time to need to reject that, um, reject those hard right angle type energies. Uh oh. Whoopsie. <laughs> lost my light um wasn't as bad as i thought it was hold on for one second it's like stuck it things are, are are here like uh um what should i say stuck together with bubblegum and scotch tape that sort of thing okay it's kind of bright but see because you have to have filters aka paper towels over your lights so they're not so bright will you please just stay Don't fall again okay so <sighs> let's get into a hidden worlds card that's where I'm being told to go now. See if we get what insight we get from the Hidden Worlds Oracle. That's going to help us here. Because I feel that this is... Um, we, we need to deconstruct some programming, some deeply ingrained like prejudices about psychics, healing, metaphysics, meditation, um, psychedelics. Like I feel like on some side you're like, I'm there, I'm there, I'm there. And it's like, nope, nope, nope. It's like you've made very, um, and maybe you've moved things over and been like, okay, well now I kind of, you know, there's been enough evidence, there's been enough evidence, and it's kind of been like that, like very kind of judgmental as far as what is and what isn't. So again, the first card that came out, believe in the impossible. Healing the earth, love, humility, respect respect healing the earth wow <laughs> so here we were this whole read talking about how important it is to connect with mother earth and here we get this card oh my gosh please <laughs> Sometimes the littlest things are the most challenging. Um, we have the empress that came in and was talking to us about connecting and healing. And here we literally get this card and it's really bright. You can barely, hold on, let me. There we go. Now you can see her face. So we have so take a look at that beautiful spirit looking at at the earth holding her there um what card is this card number 20. so let's that is so wow okay love humility respect we the humans have left the care of the planet to the great and unseen spirits all about us some it is true have taken up the burden created by the many and we and we rage and race towards the abyss telling ourselves that what matters is only today but tomorrow matters for those yet to be born and for the wisdom within you can and for the wisdom within you that can be remembered by the children of the future. Yet the forests have been murdered, the waters polluted, the gifts of the earth brought to the surface and used as playthings. It is time to heal and to remember for the great ones to do so much. But the true healing must take place in our hearts and move to our actions. Earth healing can be felt one 
sorry, earth healing can be felt when, oh, that's a misprint. <laughs> no wonder why it doesn't make sense. On those special days when the gates open and we feel the flood of energies pour down like the full moon. Uh, we can help weave those energies into the people by demonstrating what matters most. We can choose to help our mother, the earth, to be of service and to have a humble attitude and expression of energy towards her. We can walk gently and openly and know we must help her. We can pick up the fallen bird, plant a tree, speak our truth, and live like this life and this planet matter. It is temporary, this life, but it matters what we do with it most definitely it is temporary this life but it matters what we do with it and now you are being asked to be of service through expressing love humility respect for the earth in your actions let this great goddess nurturing the earth nurture you too the this path will take you away from the disposable the ungrateful the careless and move you into a deeper truer expression of your soul and illumination mantra, I play a part in caring for the earth. I s support the great ones in their healing work and embrace being a child of this earth. So really the message here is the more you connect and work to heal Mother Gaia, the more you will be healed and the more you will be in balance and the more the confusion the role to play the this is who I am that's not who I am will start to dissolve and it won't feel like this so much anymore um this like this energy will change will be this energy um, and working with Mother Gaia is definitely the way there. I mean, we we have we have our guardian angels, we have the archangels, we have all these beautiful beings that that help us and surround us. Um, but it's Mother Gaia that's coming through very strongly, reaching out to you, saying, "Please connect with me. Go into nature. Work with the elements." Um, travel, journey, explore, learn about um, plants and crystals and essential oils and um, trees and the environment and wherever you're being guided to put your energy to help Gaia, to help humanity help Gaia, to heal yourself. When we heal Gaia, we are healed. When we are healed, we heal Gaia. When we heal one, we heal all. That is just the way that it goes. And this is also why I work so deeply and so closely with Gaia and in all that I do and all the healing that I do because um, we are her child. We are of her. We are no matter what we are on a soul base level. Um, here we are human and we are her human children and we are one big human family and she holds us and she nurtures us and if we really want to be taken care of, if we really want to know um, our place at the table, let's go to mother and let's speak and talk with her and let us um, let her help us. If you're interested in deep healing with Mother Gaia, please check out my website. I, like I've mentioned, I work with her so deeply, so closely in everything that I do. But aside from that, just do it yourself. Um, however you're guided, I feel that, that for each and every one of us and everybody that's getting this message that's a little stuck, that feels a little out of place, that feels like you're in transition, but you're still kind of plugged into the matrix and you're trying to move into, you're wanting to move, but you're still kind of plugged into the old matrixes that you are into some things, but you're not into other things. And you don't have to be into everything. It's not about that. But the the rejection of things and what is real and, oh, that's, oh, you believe in this, you believe. It's like these type of things that still need to be deconstructed. And sometimes I find that, 
that those people who um that were brought up more indoctrinated into religious dogma and that kind of thing um definitely have a harder time of it and still see things as even god just being a, a male figure not a mother father god you know we all come from both energies we all need both energies to be created everything does and so that's also something too it's like there's these little things that keep the reality separated even as much as it is the idea and the concept of god being just masculine is off and not true and as we awaken to the universe to nature to our guidance we start to pick up on that and though that's like the first thing that's why the divine feminine the divine masculine energies need to be um in balance um and over and over again and comes up so much because that is integrating our understanding of what we are and what the universe is what creation is all of that stuff so there you have it i hope that this has helped i hope that this helps you connect with mother gaia to help heal mother gaia to help heal yourself to um to let go of of programs and constructs that hold you back that need to be de deleted just go with the flow and allow for the incoming energies to to reach you with that said i want to thank you please like share subscribe and comment on this video and let me know if this resonated for you and how so and i truly hope that it helps and until next time i'll see you later bye